Hello and welcome to Telecom TV's Main Agenda programme, sponsored by Hewlett Packard Enterprise and Intel. 5G is looking very much like a Swiss army knife, containing a variety of tools to capitalise on the next generation network evolution. To cope with high bandwidth consumption, low latency apps and a world where everything computes, having the right 5G transformation strategy has never been more critical. With the convergence of virtualization, IoT, AI and data analytics, the advent of 5G promises to enable the delivery of a smarter society across all industries. But what are the essential tools and strategies needed to unlock 5G's true potential for business? Well, to help answer these questions, I'm joined in the studio today by Brian Madden, who is Director of Marketing Network Platforms Group at Intel. And also joining us are from Grenoble, Klaus Pedersen, VP Telecom Infrastructure and NFE at Hewlett Packard Enterprise. And from Denver, Colorado, by Will Townsend, Senior Analyst, Carriers and Enterprise Networking at Moore Insights and Strategy. Welcome to all of you. Thanks for, for joining us today. Um, Will, let me start with you. As an analyst who covers 5G, what major trends are we seeing in the industry at the moment? Well, from a use case perspective, I spend a lot of time with the carriers as I travel around the world. And three, three core use cases really bubble to the surface for me um, around smart manufacturing, healthcare, and um, um, smart cities and, and, and public safety. And um, I think you can point to a lot of recent examples in the news. Um, AT&T's announcement in the US to open a smart manufacturing test bed in Austin, Texas, actually my hometown. And you know, most recently um, in China, there was news around a not, a, not a telemedicine session, but an actual telesurgery using uh, pre-standard 5G technology. I mean, th these are all fascinating use cases. Klaus, you know, 5G promises to deliver this faster throughput and lower latency. But, you know, how will this be truly transformative for businesses? Well, I think what's happening is that we are getting to a point where the actual connectivity is not the issue that people think about when they implement their new infrastructure and think about their services. That combined with the ability to uh, put compute on the edge of the networks and in the manufacturing side, having it all working seamlessly together is really just creating a new platform for innovation. And I think that's where we, we are heading. And then there's an underlying fabric, obviously, and standards that enable the much higher throughput latencies. But it's really the platform on top that would enable all the innovation we're to here. Brian, as Klaus says, you know, platform for innovation. I think this is something that, that, that strikes a chord with Intel as well. It does, it does. And I think that uh, you know, 5G is a very exciting opportunity for the industry in general. And innovation is a funny word because you know, when you look at you know, the, all the, the big in inventions over time, like, like the telephone, for instance, when Alexander Graham Bell invented the telephone, he didn't have a pervasive digital network for the telephone to fit into. He built the solution and then the infrastructure came behind. So innovation is a really, really important um, aspect to 5G monetization. And innovation from a developer perspective in software, but also all the way through the network, through, through as, as Cloud said, through Edge and, and through Cloud as well. Yeah, and Will, you know, you've, always, you've already given us a few uh, use case e examples there, but you know, it does come back to innovation and creating the right environment, the right platform for this innovation to take place. Absolutely, and you know, a great example is looking at what what 4G technology brought from an innovation standpoint. As Breen was was mentioning, um, no one no one anticipated ride sharing and the disruption that it would bring to um, an industry that was very lethargic, that was ripe for um, you know right sizing. And so, what's exciting about 5G technology? I mean, there, there's we're probably at the kind of the apex of the hype curve there, but given from my perspective, the extreme low latency with, with mobility, I, I believe we're going to see some just you know phenomenal innovation that that you know even is beyond you know kind of the core use cases that I spoke to earlier. Klaus, how do you think operators are, are best placed to capitalize and, and monetize these new services we're talking about? 
Well, I think in many ways. I mean, they obviously have a lot of trust from large enterprise and, and government as entities that can hold the data, that can serve them well, etc. plus a huge subscriber base already today. So I think the economical platform for going to 5G and getting ahead of the innovation curve, deliver new services is there. But the other thing, if we look at carriers' inherent uh, differentiation, could easily come from the fact that they have these very distributed blueprints. They have ability to put or combine, uh, you know, computation, AI analytics on the edge of the network with transport back into the, their core data centers or delivery of information into uh, their enterprise customers' data centers and thereby enable new types of services that we can't imagine today because that really get to the extreme low latency that we are talking about. So I think that too, there's a, the sort of the relationship with the consumers as it exists today and then this distributed footprint that we are only just now starting to think about how to take advantage of. Yeah, and, and, and just, just to add to that, Klaus, as well, I think that you know the infrastructure has been a fundamental building block for a lot of the innovation in our industry for uh, since the advent of NFD, for instance. Um, uh, we're, we're seeing now today you know, the infrastructure being highly composable, uh, highly flexible and agile. Uh, now the inf infrastructure has got to a, let's say, a maturity level uh, now the questions that we need to be asking now are in, in relation to the software and the services that sit on top of that infrastructure. And, and to really truly take advantage of 5G, we need to create a developer mindset in, in the industry and a developer mindset mm -hmm. around innovation and, and, around, and around doing things a little bit non-traditional, um, moving away from the ARPU-based business models, for instance, um, into a service-driven um, uh, service business model to really increase that time to revenue guy as opposed to time to market. Will, will you? I saw you nodding then in agreement yeah. about this, this the, the new development culture. Yeah, yeah, you know, Breen touched on it. And I, I spend a lot of time with infrastructure um, providers that are really building out, you know, um, developer you know, ecosystem communities. You know, at, uh, at HPE, Aruba has their airhead community. And that's where the real innovation is coming. And Breen touched on something that's really, really important, software defined. And more so than any other G in the past, 5G is going to bring the ability to really deploy software-defined tools so that you can do things like slice networks, guarantee quality of service for, for both consumer and enterprise service um, offerings. And that's going to bring a lot of agility um, to the operators that honestly they haven't had in, in, in past kind of iterations of um, wireless wide area networking technology.